Any brand, everywhere. Amongst all watches, Titan is the winner of the Red Dot Design Award, which is equivalent to the Oscar Award in the film world and holds the record of the slimmest watch in the world. Titan is the fifth largest watchmaker in the world, sold in 32 countries and has over 1,000 varieties catering to more than 135 million customers worldwide. Why don't you be one of them? Titan is now in Bhutan with Kushu Enterprise, the sole distributor. Visit us at Kelwang Building near Clock Tower in Thimpu. We have genuine Titan watches for all, from school-going children to office goers to armed force personnel to sportsmen with contemporary to classic designs. You can get your choice of watch at Titan. Get your Titan from Tashi Commercial Corporation in Penciling, Gelifu, Samdup Jongkar, Paro and Thimpu, Bhutan Distributor in Penciling, Choden Songkang in Mongar, Tsering Doji General Store in Tashigang, and Royal Bhutan Army Canteen in Thimpu. A Titan watch is not only a timepiece, but also a piece of jewellery with a sentimental value. Get a jewel for yourself and for your loved ones at MRP ranging from 450 to 25,000 Neutron. When you choose Titan, you are choosing a lifetime companion you can depend on every day and every season. Kuzuzangpo and welcome to Do You Know Your Child? I'm your host Choni. Positive reinforcement can greatly help young people establish individual values and make healthy decisions. Studies show that young people who feel a lack of parental warmth, love or care were more likely to report emotional distress, school problems, drug use and unhealthy behavior. When children express a desire to talk, parents should give their undivided attention. They should put aside what they are doing, face that children and give them the attention if parents, for example, continue to read the paper or watch television while a child is trying to communicate with them, the child may get the message that their parent aren't interested in what they have to say or do. So if children express a desire to talk at a time that the parent is unable to do, parents can schedule a time later on to talk to them. In our last show, our participant made some commitments. Let's see how well they're doing. I'd like to speak on behalf of uh, his dad. He committed that he'll spend quality time with uh, my with the son and with the, with the daughter. But uh, he tries his best whenever he can. On weekends, whenever kids have holiday, they go to Bajo and we spend quality time. So he's trying to keep up his commitment. This is my room. My hobbies are to play football and read books. Did you enjoy the film, Captain? Oh yes, so, 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 so. Last week, I committed that I'll sleep on 9.30. It's 9.30. I'm going to sleep. Children should never be afraid to speak with their parents. No matter how tough the topic is, even if they have messed up badly, they should not think that their parents will hate them or want to close the door on them. Parents' love must be unconditional. True, there may be consequences or emotions of disappointment, but children must know that their parents are there for them. After all, if they cannot believe in their parents' love for them, whose love can they believe in? Let's see which family we have today. My name is Sigmund and uh, I work for Minister of Economic Affairs. I study in class 4B. Um, I am from Timpu. My ambition is to become a doctor. Now, this is my mother. She, she is Rin, Her name is Rinchen Lam, and that is my grandmother. And here's my little sister, baby. Her name is Kiso. 
I am very excited to go to the show because my friends and whole Bhutan will be watching me on television. Bye bye. Let's welcome our first participant, Dad Jimmy Doji, and ask Sun Kinden later the same questions and tally their answers. Welcome to the show. Uh, my first question, as always, is Do you know your child? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, how many children do you have? Uh, I'm a father, father of two children. Okay. Tell me a little something about your family. Uh. We live in Changzhangdu. Mm -hmm. My wife is from uh, Ha, and I'm from Samnu And uh, uh, my mother in law li live with us. Okay. So we have all together uh, five in the family. All right. So small and uh, happy family. I see. Um, how old are your children? Uh, my daughter is, uh, she'll be uh, one year after one month, mm -hmm. and my son is nine years, nine years old. Okay, so mm -hmm. there is a um, gap of eight years? Uh, yes, and yes. It's, was that uh, planned and planned? Uh, it was, it, I think it's, uh, let's say it's uh, planning. <laughs> let's say it. <laughs> you planned it, but I feel like I've, I've heard a lot of people say that, you know what, while you're bringing one children, it's easier to bring another one too. So um, what, the, what parents try to do is they try to do the bringing up all together. But you waited for the f first child to grow up and be fully, um, well, partially independent, and then you've decided to bring another one. So what's, what's the logic behind that? Uh, it was a need of a time. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, it's uh, well planned. Mm -hmm. uh, after uh, my wife uh, gave birth to my son. Mm -hmm. The first one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, she had to uh, pursue her higher studies. I see. Then uh, as soon as she completed, so uh, I had my own planning mm -hmm. to pursue my father's studies. So that has taken us such a long time. I see, okay. To give a second child. Here's a question that I think a lot of the young uh, couples want to know uh, the answer to. Do you think it's really, really practical and do you think it is doable for you to continue your studies once you've become a parent? Because I heard people say it's really difficult to focus as a parent because you have a child at home. Uh, to some it may be, but uh, to some it may not. But mm -hmm. definitely to me it wasn't an issue. I see. But the only thing is we had a lot of a gap between the, the children. So. Mm -hmm. uh, when I pursue my master's degree, uh, I had my son. With you, okay. Yeah, so I had to take him with me. I see. Of course, my wife had to take an extraordinary leave. I see. But she came along with you? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. So that must have been nice. Yes, obviously. Uh, I see. It was good for my, my son uh, uh, because uh, he was exposed to a uh, different culture. Of course, yes. And uh, he learned uh, many things uh, there. True, it's yeah. a blend of uh, two cultures, mm -hmm. so I, I, I think it was uh, good for me I and see. for my son. Yeah, and what about when your wife went for her studies? Did w what was the situation then like? Did you stay back, or did you go along with your wife? Uh, no, uh, she she did her uh, for the studies here only. Oh, okay. Of course, it was affiliated to one of the universities in Australia. I see. So it was a conversion course. Mm -hmm. Is it difficult to be a parent and study at the same time? Or is it the same as being a parent and working? I think it would be a quite uh, different. I see, okay. Uh, it was uh, quite uh, difficult for me. Mm -hmm. uh, firstly, uh, we were uh, young parents mm -hmm. and uh, we need to give uh, uh, attention to our child. Yeah. And there was, uh, we consider it was uh, one of the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, when you pursue higher studies, a lot of uh, research, a lot of readings, mm -hmm. so uh, it was uh, very difficult to balance yeah. in the first place. But gradually, yes, uh, as you go along, I see. Okay, all right. Uh, it was uh, fine. Okay, all so right. So in fact, uh, I could even uh, devote my time for his studies, especially Zonka. No, oh, okay. So I devoted my time for, for teaching him oh, I see. Zonka. I see. All right. So it was. Uh, Okay, so it's possible to be a student and a parent at the uh, same yes, time. Oh yes, yes. Okay, okay. Th this does not mean we're encouraging any teenage pre pregnancy here, but uh, like you said, um, if you want to do your master, especially, I think being a parent shouldn't be a problem at all. Okay, uh, have you watched the show before, or did your son just drag you out of the blue? Oh <laughs> uh, yes, a couple of times. In fact, uh, my son uh, made me watch this, and okay. he was indicating that uh, <laughs> he will have to take me once. Yes. For this show. Okay, so. 
It's very simple, the rules of the sh uh, show. I'm going to ask you 10 questions um, related to your son. Then uh, right after you finish answering them, we'll invite your son here and then he'll get to answer all these questions. We'll tally the answers and that'll be your score, okay? okay. All right. So are you ready for your questions? Yes. Number one, who wakes him up in the morning? Most Is of it the time it's me. It's you, okay. Me. Is it difficult to wake him up in the morning? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right. But so if you're not there, who wakes him up then? Uh, my wife. Okay, but mostly you. Yes. All right. Question number two. What is Kindan's favorite sport? I think uh, cycling. Oh, okay, all right. Um, question number three. What did your son eat for breakfast this morning? Uh, f fried rice. Fried rice, okay. Number four. What is his favorite juice? Uh, orange juice. Okay. Number five. Where was your son born? Uh, Tempu. Would he know that? Yes. Okay. Question number six. Who is your son's favorite singer? Ugin Pandey. Ugin Pandey, okay. Number seven. What was your son's uh, percentage in his midterm exam? Uh, around 70. Okay. Question number eight. Who is his favorite auntie and un auntie or uncle? And uh, when I say auntie or uncle, it's the strict meaning of the word, not the Bhutanese meaning of the word, not everybody in town, but just your brothers and sisters and your wife's brothers and sisters. Of them, who is his favorite? Uh, Choose one, uncle or aunt. Uh, Auntie Bom, he, he calls it Auntie Bom. Auntie my Bom. Elder sister. Okay, or your elder sister, okay. Question number nine. Would he know when the coronation of the fourth king was? Uh, yes. He would know, okay. Your last question. Would your son know when the fourth king was born? Uh, yes. Okay, all right. With this, you've answered all the 10 questions. Now we'll have your son answer them. Welcome to the show, Kinded. Um, before anything, could you introduce yourself? My name is Kinden. I am nine years old. I study in class 4B. Um, my ambition is to become a doctor. Okay, all right. And Kinden has brought some special things for us um, that belongs to him, of course. Um, so, Kinden, what is this? Um, I created this. Okay. And how did you do this? Is this color or...? It's kind of sparkling. Stuff. So it's okay. The sparkling, whatever that is, dust. So you put that according to yeah, the. First, I put glue. Then I put those. All right. Okay. All right. This is very pretty. It says Kin Kinden Canterbury. Is that the place? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is Kinden here. Right? Who did this? I'm... Did you do the coloring yourself too? Yes, sir. The orange belly. Two very different ones, huh? Who would you like to be? I'm not sure. You're not sure? I'd go for this. <laughs> Soft, cuddly, cute, right? But that's really good too. You're also a good student. So you got two certificates for student of the student of the week. Which school did you get this from? It might be Green Slopes now. Green Slopes? This one. Okay, alright. I think this is a good movement in schools to encourage students to oh, yes. behave yes. well on a weekly basis. Because what happens a lot of the time is uh, schools tend to keep it during the end of the year mm -hmm. and um, it isn't really fair. I think a weekly basis evaluation is important. And few certificates again. It says 2011 Premier's Reading Challenge. And what did you do to get the certificate? Um, we read books, man. Okay, and you must have read really well. Are you a good reader? I'm not sure, man. You can talk good about yourself. Be honest. Are you a good reader? Uh, you don't have to be too shy. <laughs> no, ma'am, I'm not sure, ma'am. You're not sure? <laughs> I'm good or bad. Okay, I'm gonna ask Dad, because I think he knows the Bhutanese standard. And so, according to the Bhutanese standard, let's say, is he a good reader? Oh, uh, yes, definitely. Uh, that's why he was given uh, certificates. Yeah, see? By the Premier of Queensland. Mm -hmm. uh, then he was uh, very young. Oh, okay. This was in... When was this? 2011, yes. Yeah, uh, there was a competition uh, organized in dedications to the Premier. I see. Okay, all right. So there were a lot of competent uh, students. Yeah. Competing. You should be a little more yeah. confident about yourself, my dear. You have so many certificates here. And I have a really cute picture of you that says manager. 
what, tell me about this. What was, what's happening here? Uh, I was doing some experiments here. Okay, it says change water, and then I, I see some blah, 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 whatever that is. <laughs> what, what is it? How are you changing water? Uh, we put some chemicals with the others, then it just makes sounds with Oh, okay, and then it changes the color? Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you drink that water? No, ma'am. No, all right. <laughs> okay, did can you try? You, can you tell a funny story? Ma'am, over okay. here, um, I kind of uh, was doing something and uh, the, the others didn't know what to do, so they copied me and some bubbles were coming out. We all of us thought that it was going to blow, so we went out of the class. <laughs> and when right. we looked, nothing happened. It was just the bubbles. Yes. <laughs> all right, so it's good nothing happened, huh? <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be in trouble. But it ended up, you ended up not getting in trouble and taking this really cute picture. And then finally, we have a set certificate of recognition presented to Kindan Lima for Cooper's Plains Ways of Behaving. Kindan considers how his actions affect others. He always behaves with kindness and compassion. I'm really glad that you bought these certificates with you here because this gives a chance to all the parents out there, also the teachers, and any organization that is dealing with children to um, learn these various ways of appreciating children. It encourages you. It makes children pr uh, proud and happy to get certificates. So I've asked your dad 10 questions related to you. Now I'm going to ask these questions to you. Who wakes you up in the morning? Uh, my father. Okay. Question number two. What is your favorite sport? Oh, football, okay. What's your... Okay, football. What other activities do you like to do? Basketball. Okay. Question number three. What did you eat for breakfast today? I ate fried rice. Okay. What's your favorite juice? My favorite juice is mango juice. Okay. Where were you born? I was born in Temple Hospital. Okay. Question number six. Who is your favorite singer? My favorite singer is Justin Bieber. From the Bhutanese fraternity? Who do you like? Lukin Banja. Okay. So, would you want to sing? <laughs> Please. Okay. All right. Thank <laughs> you. That's great. What percentage did you get in your midterm? I think around 52. Question number eight. From your uncles and aunts, by that I mean from your father's siblings and your mother's sibling, who's your favorite aunt or uncle? Aunt Jane. Is she your mom's sister or your dad's sister? Dad's mom. Dad's sister. How many sisters does uh, dad have? Um, dad, I'm not sure. Okay. He has lots of He's lots. Okay, all right. But you, your favorite uh, aunt is? Chenga. Chenga. Okay, all right. Question number nine. Do you know when the coronation of the fourth king was? June 2nd. Okay. And do you, do you know, ma'am, the fourth king was um, very smart and kind-hearted? Yes. Do you know when the fourth king was born? 11 November 19. 55 11th November. Okay, very good. With this, you've ended uh, all the 10 questions. Now we're going to take a look at the score. Who wakes him up in the morning? Me. My father. What is Kindan's favorite sport? Cycling. Okay. What did your son eat for breakfast this morning? Fried rice. Fried rice. What is his favorite juice? Orange juice. Mango juice. Where was your son born? Temple. Temple Hospital. Who is your son's favorite singer? Ukin Bande. Ukin Bande. What was your son's uh, percentage in his midterm exam? 70. 52. Who is his favorite auntie or uncle? Auntie Pom. Auntie Would he know when the coronation of the fourth king was? Yes. June 2nd. Would your son know when the fourth king was born? Yes. 11 November. I have the score here with me. Uh, let's take a look at the questions your father wasn't able to answer correctly. Uh, your favorite sport, father said cycling. Do you enjoy cycling? Oh, yes, sir. But I think you went with the, the conventional meaning of the word sports. So he went with football and tennis and basketball. Um, question number four was favorite juice. Your dad said orange juice, <laughs> but you like mango. All right. Your dad said you might have gotten above uh, like around 70%. But you said 50, around 52. Who's right? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's around 70. It's around 70, okay. I think you had a little confusion here. 
I didn't look at the percentage. I see. You normally look at the uh, position in this. <laughs> I know. All right. Um, okay. Then the last question your dad wasn't able to answer correctly was your favorite auntie, and um, your dad said Auntie Boom, and uh, but you said Auntie Chena. Are they two different people? Yes. Okay. <coughs> and you still want, so you still stand with Auntie Chena, right? Okay. Well, with that, your dad had scored six out of ten. Okay, which is really good. Dimbe, are you happy with the score? Yes. Okay. This does not mean you bring home six out of ten ki uh, marks, huh? Which is not good for you because your dad, your teachers gave you a textbook, notebooks to study, right? I didn't give any kind of book to your dad to study, right? He had to give all the answers by recollecting it from his brain. In there, so six out of ten is really good. Now uh, we'll go to a segment where we're going to have first you commit to something, and then we'll uh, have him commit out of the uh, glass uh, bowl there. As a father, what do you think you could improve on? He's a nice boy and uh, good in studies and even good in sports. Mm-hmm. But only thing is that he need to reduce uh, his time for TV. Okay, all right. So that's uh, one important thing that I need to uh, concentrate on. Okay. So how do you think uh, you as a father could work on that? Just give a time uh-huh. between the uh, school hours and mm-hmm. the time for homework, and just before he goes to bed. Okay, so you're saying if you um, allot him particular times for him to watch TV, his um, uh, erratic hours of watching TV would uh, disappear or at least minimize. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, in fact, I've already uh, planned to do that. I see. So, just keeping a watch on him. Okay. So, how much time he's devoting? Yeah. Then, if he's devoted too much on the TV, then I think I'll have to. Uh, Uh, work on it. I see. Okay. I think yeah, definitely some of them, even keeping an eye, monitoring them, would do a lot um, of uh, benefiting to the child because first of all, you would find out what kind of uh, television material is uh, is he watching. Secondly, you know how much he's watching. Then thirdly, then you can, if you want to improve, thereon, then you can work on okay, what shows should he not watch? When should he watch? You can plan accordingly. So I think that's a great commitment. Now, Kundan, for you, we have a glass bowl here, uh, and here we have three commitments. Now, I didn't come up with these commitments. Huh? Your dad came up with them, um, but you don't have to pick all of them. You just have to pick one, and you have to promise to us on um, like on television, national television, that you know what, whatever you pick here, you'd follow it. Can you do that? Yes, ma'am. All right, here. Watch less TV. <laughs> All right, watch less television. Do you watch a lot of television? Yes. Okay. Um, I think the recommended amount of television per day is one hour, thirty minutes. I think. Okay. okay. You should never cross that. So, uh, during the weekends, maybe you could ask um, your dad, request your dad to let you watch for two hours, but. Two hours is still too much for your eyes and your brain. Stop. You could do so many other activities. Like you say, you enjoy football, tennis, basketball, right? Cycling. Do that. It's okay. better. Okay. Um, now we'll go to the segment called "With Love." We'll have the dad read the uh, letter first, and then it's, it'll be your turn. Kinden, my happiest moment in life was the day when you were born because that was the day I became a father and opened a new chapter of my life. From that very first moment, you brought me nothing into my world but happiness. Watching you grow and noticing your loving kindness and compassion, you make me a better person, and I feel privileged privileged to have you as my son. Your compassionate nature is the greatest gift that I have ever received from the God. You have an inherent beauty in your character, so use it as a strength to change the world into a better place for everyone to live. Be good, explore, and enjoy your life. Your father will always be there for you, no matter what. I don't know what future holds for you, but for a good boy, God always give good future. So be good as always. Your loving father.
hear that. You are the best parent in this world. I am so lucky to have you as my dad because you care for me so much. I love you and will be loving you forever, no matter what ever happens. <laughs> I promise to be a good son and look after you when you grow old. I will always be there when you need me. I will prove to be a good son and will never leave you behind. With love, your son, Kinden. I think my future is secret. I, I think your father, you don't even have to work extra hard to prove that you're a good son. I think your dad already knows that you are a good son already. Okay? And um, thank you so much for writing the letter. With that, I have a um, few things I want to give you for being um, a very beautiful guest, um, both inside and outside um, on the show. I have these books that I want to give you, but I definitely want to mention this special book um, written by Lexin Belden Hummel. And um, sh this writer is a student, okay? She is in class nine. This book came all the way f uh, from Tashigang. And this girl has written uh, this book about um, her experience as a student in Bhutan, okay? Um, and I think it's important um, to read this kind of books and support these kind of writers because I um, want you to be encouraged by someone as her because she's young, but she's already published her first book. And maybe she's only in class nine right now. She's already come up with uh, her first book. And what's your ambition? To be a doctor. To be a doctor. So someday when you, um, you don't have to wait till you finish everything to become what you really want to be. Right? Now, I don't think they will put, let you in the hospital as a doctor before you finish your <laughs> studies, but um, if you have any other hobbies that like you want to, uh, if you want to write songs or draw or write books, do any other things, you don't have to wait. Right? She's already started. So just for that. And that, um, you have a little sister, right? So these, the other two books would be really helpful for you and your family. Uh, and then, of course, this, and you know what's inside this. <laughs> All right, okay, so here, these are for you. All right, Kinden, thank you so much for coming to the show, and I also want to thank your dad, who's come to the show with you. Uh, I, I appreciate you uh, for being a really good guest on the show, including your dad, too. <laughs> Positive parenting starts by creating a good relationship with your child so that he or she responds to gentle guidance as opposed to threats and punishments. The most effective discipline strategy is having a close bond with your child. Kids who feel connected to their parents naturally want to please them. Practice loving guidance, not punishment. Punishment is destructive to your relationship with your child and ultimately creates more misbehavior. Guiding your child means setting limits and reinforcing expectations as necessary in a way that helps the child focus on improving his or her behavior rather than being angry at you. Come back next week and if you'd like to be a part of this show or if you have any suggestions or feedback, please email us at parenting at bbs.bt. Thank you and bye-bye.